First of all, can you all hear me? Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed for inviting me here. I've often wanted to come to Mannheim because of the interesting grid system and numerical numbering of the blocks. And I'm very glad that whoever organised this conference organised the sunshine because it's just been beautiful. I, I'm the a social scientist uh, with a PhD in psychology and genetics. Um, I've, I work at, mainly, my paid work has been in academic departments of medicine. Um, a lot of the work I've done, and much more recently, is in the voluntary sector, and I chair a major uh, patient organisation that works in primary care. Uh, in, since 2018, this year, all GP practices in the UK uh, must have a patient participation group. Um, well, it was, it was originated a little earlier. Not all do, and we are the umbrella organisation for uh, these patient participation groups, reaching out to some 20 million patients UK-wide. So, here goes. I've changed it slightly, patients, rather than a single patient. And I'm very grateful to Holly for her um, interpretation at the beginning. Um, why, one needs to ask, would patients want to see their lab results? Um, they have access to their records. Now, many, including people who have lifelong conditions, have looked at their records. People with cancer, people with adult polycystic kidney disease, people with type 1 diabetes have long, long since, even before record access was um, permitted uh, for everybody, have looked at their uh, lab test results. So these patients are involved in self-monitoring. They ask for results. How audacious. What does fine mean? Um, we're so often told as patients, I'm sending you for a test. What is this test? Is it a blood test, a urine test, a spit test? Heaven only knows what it is. And what does it involve? Patients assume that they will get their results very quickly. Uh, this is particularly true of the, the six-digit uh, generation, as I call them, the ones with the, the digit on their uh, uh, mobile phone as their six-digit. We have a grandson, age 17, off to university in the autumn to study law, plays rugby. He hurt his shoulder. He was sent for an X-ray. The radiographer had difficulties in the quality of the slides. Um, she said she couldn't interpret them. It, they had to go to a doctor, and he was in a hospital. Jonathan, our grandson, knew this hospital was 30 miles away. How would the, the films get there? Oh, she said, down the telephone. Ah, he said, send them to me, and I will take them to the relevant people. Oh, we don't speak to patients. So there we are, there's a particular problem. Patients take regular medication. Now we know this, we know that they're over 65s apparently, and I'm well beyond that now, uh, but I don't take anything, thank you, um, are taking more and more and more. And the Lancet article of four years ago demonstrated that there would be up to um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different conditions people were uh, taking medicines for. They've read the patient information leaflet provided by the drug company. They know what's, what should be done, so they need to know their results. Now, Holly has already mentioned health literacy and numeracy. It is an issue. But what about not speaking the same language? The United Kingdom is um, multilingual. Uh, and English may not be the native language of the people um, uh, that uh, are looking at the results. There's also sensory deprivation. It was mentioned colour blindness, but there are other sensory deprivations. And of course, there's intellectual incapacity. Education. Now, it's not just that the better educated understand more. 
because we know that physicians don't understand very well and they are meant to be better educated. Um, I learned about probability by meeting um, a journalist who was the journalist for racing, uh, journalists, racing reporting for a terrible Scottish newspaper, Ghastly. And he gave me a tip. Every two weeks, I went to the booking office and I placed a bet. But these were only men in these, this place, these places I went to. My goodness, they understood uh, what risks were and what probabilities were. And they gave, I got very good tips and I always won. So there, there was a, a something, but that had nothing to do with their education. People want to know, it's my body. I want to know, how dare people keep this information from me? It, it, sorry, I'll go back. The information, sorry, the information is useful to the patient for whatever reasons. Now, here's another issue. Has the person got the confidence to ask questions? Not everybody has. But there is also in the UK, and I suspect in other countries too, a decline in deference to professionals, not just health professionals, but uh, professionals in general. And there's an ability to source information from elsewhere. Now, there is a, a, a word, I don't actually like it, but it's called patient activation. And what it means is an individual's knowledge, skill, and confidence for managing their health and health care. And if one doesn't have that, one runs into difficulties. One has little confidence, one's ability to have a positive impact on, on one's own health. One misunderstands the role that we can play. One would rather not think about one's health. Now that happens for a lot to lots of people. And one is overwhelmed by the idea of managing one's own, own health, particularly if you've got these five, six, seven, eight, and more different conditions, and have limited, and this goes back to our uh, numeracy and, and health literacy, have limited problem-solving ability. Now, I've already mentioned that patients have, in the UK, have access to their GP medical record. Um, and all patients in the UK uh, have a right to be registered with a general practitioner who keeps this record. And this record is owned by the Secretary of State. It's not owned by the general practitioner and it's not owned by the patient either. It would be good if it was owned by the patient, but it's not. But it's in safekeeping by the general practitioner. Uh, in 1998, um, UK patients had a right to view their GP patient record. That was really a struggle. You had to be very, very persistent to do that. And by 2018, all GP, all patients should be able to access their digital record. Now, this record, as it's been mentioned several times to, uh, today and yesterday, includes laboratory tests and all other investigations. It is not the hospital record. It will include reports from the hospital. So therefore, one needs a clarity of test result information. Um, we have evidence in the UK of still a slow but increasing use by UK patients of their digital record. Patients need to be reassured about data confidentiality. Uh, I haven't heard that talked about much over the last two days. Um, uh, we had our the charity had our annual conference last weekend, uh, and one of the punters asked me, one of the delegates asked me why the GP couldn't just press a button and send the record directly to him. Why did it have to go through an other an other company who dealt with this? because what he didn't know what this other company would do with his data. This is what's happening all the time, and I hear it, I heard it yesterday. Um, it's very, very common. So patients need to be reassured 
about the confidentiality of their data. There also needs to be far more transparency. We haven't lived in a society where the patient has been informed of everything. Things are done to us. We are managed. Heaven help us. Okay, where do we get sources of information about our lab results? The internet, yep. Television and media, yes. Friends, none of these are necessarily reliable. Even pharmacists, they may offer point of care testing, but that, that may not be done in a laboratory that is approved, and that there is evidence that the results may be different from uh, major lab tests. Mobile apps, there were questions yesterday about the concern about reliability. The referring clinician, yes, if it's the general practitioner, time is of an element, very little uh, opportunity to have much time, and I'm mainly um, discussing uh, GP patients. Lab tests online, I have to declare an interest. I'm a board member of Lab Tests, lab tests Online. I think it is a superb organisation. It needs to improve a little bit more and have more lay people involved. It's clinician-led still. Danielle knows my views, <laughs> but it, it will get better. Um, and it is a superb um, source of information. Interestingly, as has already been mentioned, mainly used by doctors and nurses. Now, what do patients need to know about their tests? What, what's this for? Give it a name. Which illnesses can it identify, or can it identify any illness? Has this been discussed with the patient? And if it's a more serious one, it, there would need to be consent. Where will the test be done? When will the patient receive the results? When will I get the information? And how will I get it? Now, this has already been um, alluded to. What is normal? What is normal for me as an individual? Are the results with the no within the normal range for the population or for the age group or for the individual patient? That one needs to know too. How are these results interpreted? And what does abnormal mean? Patients want to know both normal and abnormal. And what do risks mean? And I'm coming back to that. And what about understanding uncertainty? And again, who is going to explain this to me? Mainly, in general practice, the receptionist. <laughs> Patients' perceptions of risk may be very different from healthcare professionals. Patients vary in how they interpret words and numbers. Now, I suspect that the majority of you in this room would think that a 50-50 chance of inheriting a serious genetic illness was a high risk, yes? I've done a study, partly for my PhD and, and subsequently, that that was understood by patients uh, as a medium risk. So there's already a problem. And we then need to decide about this very common, common, or one in 10. Patients like both. They like the figures and they like the word explanation. Um, the last two bullet points uh, were used by us in a little booklet produced by the uh, Royal College of Anaesthetists in the UK, but it's since been updated. Um, and it, it explains what, what risks were. Uh, and these are also, very similar explanations to some of the drug company uses use in the patient information leaflet. Now, uncertainty. There are many, many words, and I'm sorry, I do not know in all other languages whether the same applies, um, but there are many words in English to describe uncertainty, and I've heard in sitting in on so many 
medical consultations with um, patients, uh, all these words used, quite certain, expected, likely, probable, not unreasonable that it will happen, possible, hoped, not certain, doubtful and unlikely. And these are also substantiated in the Robert Hogarth's uh, classical book. Now, you know, I know, that medical science is not an exact science. Um, it, it, it's not based on all exactness. The public, as of when they become a patient, don't necessarily understand this. So one has to share this uncertainty uh, with patients, with those with long-term conditions, with those monitoring their own treatment, with patients who want it, and with carers. You've got to trust the patient. Heavens, we've got to trust you. So what about this trust? And I suspect in Amir Hanan's given by uh, Richard in the next presentation that this will be discussed. But one has to consider trust. I Trust is earned. Please remember. It's not something that one has automatically. Okay, if you're in an accident and are taken into A&E, you've just got to hope that the person dealing with it is very good. But in the normal course of events, we have to learn to trust. But equally, the professionals have to learn to trust us. Patients are part of the team, and I don't know how this fits in with managed. It's a word I hear over and over again, managing. If you're part of the team, are you managed? I doubt it. Involving patients in decision-making uh, can save money for the health services in whichever country was, one is in, patients and time. And it, just very briefly about this cost, the UK, as you all know, has a, um, a, a national health service paid out of general taxation. The majority of the public do not know how, things, how much things cost. They don't know the cost of their medication. They don't know the cost of a GP consultation. They don't know the cost of an x-ray. The accountancy system is there, but they don't know it. We are managed not to know it, and it's our body. Now, part of this lab test is how do we get information? How do we get these results? Um, there is evidence in the literature that patients prefer, and these were hospital patients, uh, to receive the information from a clinician, a voice. Um, what about written? information? Yes. Uh, clinical geneticists now, after the, a long first interview, send a letter with which is, lots of it is um, uh, standard for everybody, but there would be personal bits in it, giving the patient information about what was discussed yesterday at the clinic. Th that is helpful too, but that's time cons um, consuming. What about on the computer? Pictorial. Some patients learn from pictures. I hate it, but that's just me. Verbal. Is there a clear system known to me? Patients also wish to hear, please remember, about normal results. And the use of technology, including text, uh, when agreed with the patient. And I've, I was brought up in the highlands of Scotland. Still, I don't live there anymore, but still in different parts of it, there is no internet. Uh, so using a mobile phone is um, not realistic. Not everybody carries a mobile phone and not everybody is techie um, familiar. Um, this is this issue of shared accountability. Um, it is important that I, as the patient, know about accountability. If something is wrong, and remember, I'm going to be reading these results, who is responsible? Is it Danielle and her lab, 
who's given me the results? Is it the referring clinician? Um, who? Or is it the member of staff in a GP surgery who's phoned up and says they're fine? That I've covered. Um, it is, I believe, the responsibility of healthcare professionals to ensure that and share with the patient and, and make sure that the patient understands the results and shares that with them. They should have a contemporary record of what the results are. In the electronic age, we know this. It is not difficult. All day yesterday, we were talking about the electronic age. It is not difficult. And remember, the patient is part of the team. Uh, please don't forget that, and thank you for listening. <laughs>